Welcome everyone. My name is uh, Piotr Brutk and I'm from Wrocław University of Science and Technology. Today I would like to briefly present to you the concept of sequential seeding in multi-layered networks together with the main findings from our evaluation of this approach. Uh, so in general, if we would like to run or simulate the spreading process in the network, we have few steps in mind. First, we would like to select seed nodes with which we will initially initiate our spreading process. To choose them, we usually rank nodes in the network according to some measure like degree, page rank, k shell, and so on. And next, depending on our seeding budget, that is uh, the amount of resources we have to convince, to influence, to impact our nodes, we select some number of nodes starting from the top of the ranking. In the next final step, uh, we activate all seed nodes and observe the spreading process. Uh, in our toy example, we have budget to convince two social media users to our product and we select them based on the degree. Thus, in this case, we activate nodes four and five since they have the highest value of degree measure and we start the spreading process simulated in this case with independent cascade model. Uh, just a quick reminder, in independent cascade model, each newly activated node has one and only one chance to activate each neighbor uh, depending on the activation probability, its activation probability. Uh, so after just three steps, the process ends. Since we do not have any node which can activate its neighbor. And finally, we end up with seven active nodes in our small, small network. And this is uh, the traditional approach we know for years and we use for years. But we ask ourselves, what if instead of activating all seed nodes at once, so in, in single stage, we will activate them in a sequence through many stages. So the beginning of the spreading process look exactly the same. So we rank our nodes depending on some measure, but instead of spending the whole budget at once and activating all seed nodes at once, we activate just one node and save the rest of our budget for the next iteration of the spreading process. In our toy example, instead of activating nodes four and five, like previously, we activate just node four. And because node, node four has the highest degree and it's connected to five on all layers, it was able to activate node five. And here we can see the highest potential of sequential seeding. That is, if we wait just a bit, some nodes for whom we, in traditional uh, approach, we would spend our resources to convince them, will be convinced naturally for free by their neighbors. And we can spend our resources, our money, to activate those nodes who might not be activated by their neighbors. So in our toy example, uh, we can use our saved money to activate the next not active node with the highest degree, namely node number nine. And this allows us to access the new part of the network, which we were not able to activate using previous uh, traditional uh, seeding. This time, uh, the whole process lasted uh, four iteration instead of three, and we were able to activate all 11 nodes in the network. So uh, summing up the main differences between single stage seeding and sequential seeding. In single stage seeding, we activate all seed nodes at once, while in, sing in sequential seeding, we select and activate nodes in a sequence. In the first case, we had uh, nodes four and five as a seed nodes, while in the second case, in the sequential seeding case, we had nodes four and nine. 
And thanks to that, we were able to activate 11 nodes instead of just seven, because node nine was not active in the first uh, case. And, and you can say that by using our budget to activate it, we were able to access the uh, other part of the network where the three nodes were separated. Of course, this is just a, for example, designed to give you a general understanding of how the sequential seeding approach <clears throat> looks like to see what is the real difference between single stage and sequential seeding, we have designed and run an, a number of experiments. Uh, the experiments uh, have been performed using the uh, multi-net R library. Uh, we have used 10 multi-layer networks, uh, four real multi-layer networks, uh, three networks where we had uh, 1,000 actors and two, three, or five layers, and each layer were, were, was erdorf Reni network, and three similar networks, uh, so with uh, 1,000 of actors and two, three, or five layers. But this, in this case, each layer was scale-free network. Uh, we also had nine different propagation probabilities for our independent cascade model. We had uh, four seed uh, counts or seeding budget, allowing us to activate two, five, 10, and 20% of the network. Uh, we have used three different seed selection strategies or, or, or measures uh, to rank our seeds. So we used a multi layer degree, a multi layered neighborhood, and neighborhood size and random selection as a control. And finally, we had three seed acti activation strategies. So traditional single stage seeding, uh, our sequential seeding, and sequential seeding with revival, uh, which is yet another approach we have been evaluating. However, due to time constraints, I won't be discussing this one. So if you are interested, please check out uh, our paper. Uh, as mentioned before, we had to use independent cascade models. So in order to be able to compare results between runs for single stage seeding and sequential seeding, uh, we have used the approach called coordinated execution, where for each network and each propagation probability, 100 network instances were generated by assigning a binary choice of propagation or not for each edge independently from A to B and from B to A. This resulted in uh, 9,000 network instances. And for each network instance, we have run 36 uh, simulations for all possible parameter, parameter combination for four different seed counts, three seed selection strategies, and finally, three seed activation strategies. And here we have the comparison between sequential seeding and single stage seeding for all cases. Uh, the blue color indicates, in, indicates the gain. So how much more actors have been activated by sequential seeding in comparison with single stage seeding? Uh, for example, here, uh, using sequential seeding approach, we were able to activate 30% more nodes than uh, single stage seeding. Uh, sequential seeding always achieve, achieves at least the same results as the single stage seeding. And in 74% of the cases, sequential seeding performed uh, better than single, st uh, single stage seeding, allowing us to activate more uh, nodes in the network. The orange color uh, indicates how large percentage of seeds have not been used. So the budget saved by sequential seeding strategy after activating all nodes in the networks. And in 32% of cases, we have been able to uh, save some seeding budget and half of that cases, 
uh, were uh, when both approaches, so single stage seeding and sequential seeding, uh, have been able to activate all nodes in the network, uh, meaning that we have been able to activate all nodes but deeper. Uh, this, of course, can be very beneficial for companies with limited advertising uh, budget. However, the higher coverage and savings of sequential seeding comes with the price. Using sequential uh, seeding uh, results in much longer spreading process. So the green color indicates how much longer the sequential seeding lasted compared to single stage seeding. And on average, uh, sequential seeding uh, lasted about nine, nine times uh, longer. So it took nine uh, times more iteration of independent cascade model to finish the spreading process. And this can be very important for uh, spreading campaigns with fixed deadline, like for example, presidential election. Also, uh, please note that the longer spreading process occurs only in those cases where we gain something, something. So where we gain additional users. So yeah, we, we pay with time for higher coverage. So summing up, firstly, uh, sequential seeding always produce at least the same results as a single stage seeding in terms of the total number of activated nodes. Secondly, even we, if the coverage is the same for single stage seeding and sequential seeding, the sequential seeding usually allow us to save some seeding budget. And finally, with sequential seeding, the spreading process lasts longer. Uh, if, you are, if you would like to know more about uh, sequential seeding in other types of networks, I recommend to uh, review our previous uh, papers on, on that topic in, in various network and various setups. And thank you for listening. If you are interested in more results, uh, more detailed results, of course, uh, please see our paper. And since it is not uh, open access publication, it is also available on archive. Uh, what is more, we made all code and data <clears throat> available on a GitHub. And to allow for easy results reproduction, we also created a code ocean capsule, which allow you to run exactly the same experiment we had. And if you have any questions, uh, you can ask them now or send them to me uh, later. Thank you.